everyone. Thank you for uh, joining the webinar today. My name is Maxwell Green and I am a training manager here at NeedyMeds. So who is NeedyMeds? NeedyMeds is a national nonprofit organization. The face of our organization is our website and it's an informational resource. Through our website and toll-free helpline, we connect patients to programs that provide financial assistance for healthcare expenses. We do have a special guest today who I will introduce shortly, but first I would like to go over a few housekeeping rules. If you have questions, feel free to ask them at any time by typing them into the questions bar of your control panel. Either the guest or myself will answer them at the end. This webinar will be recorded and can be found on the webinar library page under the Getting Started tab of the Needy Meds website. You may also find similar webinars under that same page. Lastly, we will provide our contact information at the end should you have any questions following the webinar. And with that, I'd like to begin. This webinar is co-hosted by MedPro Disposal, and today's topic is Talking Trash, What You Need to Know About Medical Waste Disposal. The United States produces 2 million tons of medical waste each year. Without realizing it, you may be spending thousands of dollars just to dispose of trash. Join us for a live webinar, Talking Trash, What You Need to Know About Medical Waste Disposal with John Cusis sales manager at MedPro Disposal. In this webinar, we'll be talking about what medical waste is, how to properly dispose of it, and how it's treated in ways to cut costs, as well as the importance of being in compliance. Now I'd like to give you a little background about our special guest, John Kiusis. John Kiusis is a sales manager at MedPro Disposal, a medical waste disposal service company based in Naperville, Illinois. He began his career at MedPro as a driver four years ago. As a driver, John was able to visit MedPro facilities and service customers by handling their medical waste pickup. He was able to learn the ins and outs of the medical waste disposal industry, which eventually led him to make the decision to get into sales. He wanted to help customers save money on their medical waste removal through education and awareness. Today, he manages MedPro's sales teams and helps educate healthcare providers who aren't aware that there is an alternative solution to their medical waste disposal. Okay, thank you for joining us today, John. I'm going to switch the screen and pass the mic to you. All right, well, Maxwell, I appreciate that introduction. Um, like uh, Max had just introduced, my name is John Cusis. I am the sales manager at MedPro Disposal. And uh, yes, I've been with the company for four years. Um, I've, uh, I've lear learned a lot about this industry from various points. Um, early on, starting here as a driver has certainly given me a unique perspective on medical waste industry. Um, specifically, myself being inside of the offices, seeing the procedures, seeing how busy all of the offices are, but also seeing a little bit of the lack of education as far as medical waste in general. Uh, moving into a sales role and then sales management role has allowed me to work individually a lot, uh, very frequently with our customers, but not just with our customers. Moving into management, I'm now able to work much closer with our customer service department, operations, our marketing department. Um, so by all of these factors putting together, I do have a very wide ranging experience uh, in the medical waste uh, removal industry. So. Uh, like uh, Max had mentioned, if you have any questions, certainly type them in the chat bar. You can um, chat them in during the webinar or um, towards the end, uh, whichever is easier for you. And I'll certainly uh, do my best to answer any of those questions. So with that being said, we'll uh, go ahead and start. Like Max had said, there's over 2 million pounds of medical waste disposed of uh, in the United States each and every year. Um, with that being said, 80% of that waste is typically being handled by one provider. So a little bit of background, medical waste really didn't become an actual thing until the late 1980s. So the Medical Waste Management Act of 1984 actually brought medical waste into uh, existence. Uh, previously, it was being disposed of in the regular solid waste stream. So your regular solid waste vendor would have picked it up. Now, uh, due to these regulations, it has to be a specific company with rules and permits and regulations that pick this up. 
Well, today, 80% of this uh, area is being serviced by one vendor, um, which is not MedPro. We are the largest privately owned company and the fastest growing. Um, so while this service is required, overpaying is not. Um, and we know this is because our largest competitor is more than 80% of the market share and has in some ways monopolized the market. Um, so when we came in in 2009, we have grown tremendously. We cover 46 of the 50 states. Um, now with our new mail back program, we actually cover all 50 states. Uh, us being this wide ranging for service has allowed us to work very closely uh, with other local affiliate waste companies in the industry and has brought us a in-depth and insight into all the rules and regulations, whether it's not just nationally, uh, statewide, countywide, and locally, uh, we are extremely familiar with all of that. So types of waste uh, that you'll find inside of a medical facility, obviously you have solid waste, uh, sharps, biohazard, trace chemotherapy, and pharmaceutical waste. Now, solid waste is what you know of every day. That's what you throw in your regular garbage can at home. That's what you put in the little garbage can underneath your office desk. That's solid waste. We're all very familiar with that. Now, sharps waste and biohazard waste, they're one in the same. So in most facilities, you have a sharps container um, and you also have a probably a red bag uh, liner in a can or in the medical waste box that's being provided today. So the sharps waste is very important. Sharp, uh, sharps have to go into a regulated sharps container. They cannot be placed directly into the biohazard bin or bag. Now, sharps waste is anything that start that is a sharp or can be a sharp. So therefore, if you have glass vials, uh, those will also not be placed directly into the biohazard can. They would go into the sharps container first, then into the biohazard waste. Now, biohazardous waste is an interesting uh, is an interesting term. It's also commonly referred to as regulated medical waste, medical waste, infectious waste, red bag waste. There are various terms for it. One term, though, that is important not to confuse is biohazardous waste versus hazardous waste. And I'll briefly touch on hazardous waste in a little bit, but they are two very different things. Now, biohazard waste is anything that has been saturated or soiled in a bodily fluid. So later in this webinar, you'll see a chart of things that do and do not go in the red bag waste. One of the easiest ways to reduce your spend uh, inside of a facility is through education, is to making sure that everybody understands what is and what is not biohazardous waste. For example, the definition I just gave you, I said a very key word, which is saturated. And the example I like to give is, if you were at home and, have, and get a bloody nose for some reason, and you grab some Kleenex and stop that bloody nose, well, the blood dries up on the Kleenex, and you're certainly not calling a medical waste company to come out to your house to pick that up. You'll throw that in the regular trash. The same theory applies inside of a medical waste office. If you use gauze to treat a wound and that is just a little bit of blood on the gauze and it dries up and would be flaky, so if you were to, for some reason, run your fingernail across it and it would flake, that can actually go in the solid waste. Now, if that gauze was saturated and you were to squeeze it and blood or any type of fluid would then seep out of that, that would then be biohazardous waste and go into the bin. Now, some facilities do decide to err on the side of caution, put it into that biohazard waste bin either way. Of course, that's fine. Uh, that's not, there's nothing against doing that. We typically do see that happen pretty often. But if you can reduce the waste stream uh, to the biohazardous waste, you will probably spend less money over time. Uh, less containers will be picked up, they'll weigh less, uh, et cetera. So it's certainly a, an important part. Now, chemotherapy waste for oncology centers or anybody that uh, administers chemotherapy, the key word in this slide here is trace chemotherapy. Trace chemotherapy stands for anything less than 3% remaining solution. 
So therefore, if chemo is being administered in an IV bag, the patient for some reason has a reaction, gets sick, the treatment needs to be paused halfway through, and there's half of that IV bag remaining of the chemo medication, that cannot be disposed of in a biohazard container. That therefore is hazardous. So bulk chemo is hazardous, trace chemo anything less than 3%. So therefore, if the IV bag was completely administered, that IV bag and the uh, IV tubing lines would be able to be disposed of in the biohazard container. And last but not least, uh, many offices have pharmaceutical waste. Uh, pharmaceutical waste uh, is broken up between three categories uh, that MedPro does have a solution for, for disposing of. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Um, and the pharmaceutical waste, there's your typical over-the-counter prescription type medications. Um, then there's controlled medications, which are highly regulated by the DEA. And then there's the hazardous medications. Now, all of those are very easily segregated inside of a facility, but if for some reason they need to be disposed of, they cannot go into your regular medical waste bin. So very frequently uh, and commonly, people will put loose pills into a sharps container or blister packs into the biohazard container. That is not um, a proper way of disposal. At the end of the day, all of this waste does end up in a landfill. So therefore, if you're putting medications into that waste stream, it's going to end up into the water stream. And that's something that the EPA is working very hard to change. Some common ways of disposal uh, in the past and currently are to either flush medications or put them down the drain. Now, today, that's not illegal. And uh, so to be very frank, if you're doing that today, there's Technically, nothing illegal with that. Now, you are putting that into our water stream, but the EPA does have some regulations that are coming down the pipeline over the next 12 to 18 months that will be changing that. So MedPro is a little ahead of the game as far as offering proper pharmaceutical disposal. Uh, so again, at the end of the webinar, if you're interested in this, uh, please let me know and I can dive in a little bit more about what that disposal method looks like. So how is medical waste treated? Uh, believe it or not, this is actually a question I do not get very often that I thought when I got into this industry I would actually get more of. So what happens to the waste when you pick it up? Well, the waste is transported to a destruction facility and is really disposed of in two main ways, whether it's an autoclave or an incinerator. Chemical treatment we won't really touch on today. That's more so for hazardous waste or dissolving chemicals that could be possibly uh, combustible. But 85% of all medical waste is disposed of through autoclave technology. So the waste is rolled into an autoclave, which essentially is a large stainless steel tunnel that is then vacuum sealed shut. And then a bunch of high pressure, high temperature steam is pumped in. All of the waste inside the autoclave is then essentially sterilized, or in our terms, we label it RNI, rendered non-infectious. Fancy way of saying sterilized, that's all it is. Once that waste is autoclaved, it's then taken directly to a shredder, where it's shredded and then compacted down, taken to a dedicated landfill. Now, autoclave technology is less expensive to run than an incinerator emits almost zero carbons into the air, uh, therefore extremely green and EPA friendly. Um, and, and at the end of the day, this isn't emitting any odors into the, into the air for any surrounding neighbors, for our environment, it's extremely environmentally friendly. Now, the other 15% of that waste is disposed of through incineration. Now, if we were doing this webinar 10 years ago, I could tell you that there would be 200 operational incinerators uh, for medical waste. Today, that number over the last 10 years has dwindled from 200 down to 20 incinerators across the United States. That reason is because the EPA has cracked down substantially on the requirements that are needed to be met in order to operate an incinerator. Um, and all for a good reason. Now, because there are significantly less available in today's society, the cost for incineration is more expensive. And the type of waste that has to be incinerated is very little. Uh, trace chemotherapy waste and pathology waste. 
needs to be removed through an incinerator. And pathology waste is really for a laboratory that may be testing E. coli or sam salmonella samples um, or in some rare cases, amputations um, need to be disposed of through an incinerator. So that are that is the two main ways that medical waste is treated today. So what does it actually cost? So most people will look at medical waste and say, okay, I know someone has to come pick it up and I know they have to dispose of it somehow, but what influences my price from my current vendor? Well, here are the things that, that cause the price to either increase or decrease depending on the customer. Location, state regulations, route density, what type of waste like we just discussed, and how often do you need us to come and how much waste are we actually picking up? So volume and frequency. So location is very simple. If you're anywhere near a major metropolitan area, um, then your price is probably pretty competitive um, compared to other customers in the area. Now, if the MedPro truck has to go to a more rural area and that your maybe your current vendor doesn't have as many locations there, then certainly your price would, would have to be increased due to just additional cost of fuel. But it should not be substantially different, but it does have an impact. State regulations on how long you can store your infectious waste. So this bullet point and the last bullet point tie together. The last bullet point is volume and frequency. That is, think of it like a bulk purchase, correct? So if we are coming and picking up one box, then the vendor's cost of fuel, labor, and destruction, we still have to get the truck to your facility. Now, if I'm there already, but I'm picking up 10 boxes instead of one, you're certainly going to get a better price than you know, coming once a month and picking up one box or coming once a quarter and picking up four boxes. Now, I understand all facilities are a little bit different as far as their storage capacity. So that's something that we're very well aware of. But state regulations may not allow you to store waste for up to 90 days. So California and Florida are the only two states that have specific storage instructions. <coughs> Excuse me. California uh, is stated that if you produce more than 20 pounds per year, you're actually required to have a monthly pickup. And in the state of Florida, you are required to have your medical waste removed every 28 days. So that is um, that certainly impacts the volume and frequency. And then route density. Are there other facilities in the same service, using the same service in your area? So for instance, if you're in a medical office building and MedPro services suite 201, well, if we can get you and 201 and 202 and 203 on the same service schedule, then while we're there, if we pick everybody up at the same time, we certainly can offer a better rate for that. So all of this is what is factored into medical waste disposal cost. What you will not see on this slide are things like energy charges, environmental charges. There are very small fees that vendors have to pay to the state EPA, but they're inconsequential. So they don't really impact our price. They're very tiny. It's roughly a penny per pound, maybe a little bit more than that, that we have to pay in a tax to the state as a disposal facility, but very little. So that's what we just touched on. Most people find themselves in an instance where they are dramatically overpaying. If you are with uh, the company that tends to dominate the market, there is a good chance that you're overpaying. But if you're unsure, these things are exactly what you'll wanna look out for. These are all red flags to the fact that you are overpaying for your current medical waste provider. So required service. If your current vendor ever calls you and, and states the fact that you're required to be picked up this often, if you're not in California or Florida, I highly suggest researching that yourself. Because if a vendor comes more often, then they can charge you more. So it's one of the ways that we've seen, unfortunately, vendors uh, require service amongst their customers to increase their rates. Target specialty. We have seen certain industries targeted more than others for one reason or the other. 
Um, some of the few that pop out to me today are uh, plastic surgery centers, urgent cares, small uh, mom and pop type of family practices, two to three doctor practices, and surgery centers. Those tend to be the ones that we find get overcharged the most. That doesn't mean everybody else is not being overcharged. We just have seen dramatic cases where Plastic Surgery Center, for example, last week that signed up with MedPro saved over $50,000 a year on the service. Um, so that's just one specific case. We have several other case studies uh, like that, but that's just one that pops out at me today. Elective procedures, so things that are required for you to pay for. So OSHA training, something that MedPro does provide as a service to their customers, although it is not required to purchase it through MedPro. So through other vendors, they typically roll it into one package and then you're in some ways forced to pay for it. And then extra fees like we just talked about. So manifest fees, surcharges like fuel, environmental, energy fees, overweight charges or uh, extra box charges that don't seem in line, estate uh, taxes and stop fees. So these are all clear indications that you may be being overcharged by your current medical waste vendor. So what really is medical waste? This is exactly what we just talked about and optimizing the service to get the most bang for your buck because on average, we save people roughly 30%, uh, all the way up to 70% uh, on the sites. And this is just what MedPro has seen. The, this is data that we've put together um, over the last seven years. That on average, on the, on the low volume producers, that equates to about $500 a year per location, all the way up to $10,000 a year per location. That's the average, and that is significant savings to several facilities. Because what we have to take in mind is, sure, $3,000 a year might not feel at first like a, maybe like a major impact, maybe it will. But you have to remember that this is service that as long as your practice is open, you will be paying for. So if you don't make a change, and if you continue to overpay, and that $3,000 a year over the next 10 years is suddenly $30,000. Uh, so that certainly adds up and it adds up very quickly. But one of the easiest ways also is optimizing the service. Like we talked about educating the people inside your facility, make sure what they're putting into the biohazard waste bin is biohazardous and to take a look at your volume and frequency. Are you on the right schedule? Did you set the schedule or did your current vendor set the schedule? All very important things to remember. So, this chart, we can certainly email out. I know that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, so if you need to come back and reference this, we'll have several ways uh, at the end. You feel free to email or call me if you'd like this chart and I can get this out to you. But this is a very, so on the very left column are common items we get asked about. And then whether they go in the regular trash, the red bag trash, or in a sharps container. Um, so like I said, we're not gonna, go over each every single one of these but if you would like this chart uh, please contact myself or or contact Maxwell and he can email me as well but you will have my direct contact after this webinar so talking trash right I mean that's a it's a common term that we've all heard before but if you were to call around, whether you call MedPro, whether you research online and look for a company in, in your area to service you, what would you, act, what would you need to know? What, would you, what kind of information would you have to give them for them to be able to put together a price? Well, like we discussed earlier on what it takes and what medical waste actually costs and the factors that go into it, this is what you would need to know. How often is your waste picked up? And then how many containers and what type of container? So it's very, uh, very important to look at on the top picture, the middle picture and the picture to your right, the RMW container and a Sharps container. Now when the, when the vendor asks you, so if you were to call MedPro uh, and I asked you how many containers are picked up per month or per quarter or per stop, what I'm really asking you is how many RMW containers are picked up. So every once in a while, we'll have someone confuse that uh, term container with the Sharps container. 
as we've discussed, the Sharps container, when full, goes directly into the RMW container. You may be able to fit four, six, eight of those Sharps containers into one RMW container. Well, if you tell the person at MedPro that you have eight containers picked up, and you really mean Sharps containers, then the MedPro rep would actually give you a quote for eight RMW containers. And really, you may only need one or two. So that's the important distinction there. And then on the bottom, you know, be able to compare with what you're currently being produced. Uh, what do you, what's your current rate and billing frequency? So how often are you billed and how much? And then the type of waste obviously is very important. So do you have any of the chemotherapy waste? Do you have pharmaceuticals that you need disposed of? That will certainly be very helpful in obtaining a quote, not just from MedPro, but from any vendor. So how to stay protected? Compliance and insurance. Now, this is a very important piece. Uh, there's really, uh, outside of MedPro disposal, um, there aren't many companies in this industry that offer you the same type of compliance and insurance. Uh, so insurance for transportation and disposal of waste. Now, I'm happy to say today that MedPro disposal has never had an incident um, year to date. Uh, never had any type of OSHA violation. We've never had any incident with any of our trucks or waste being disposed of improperly. But if that were the case, if something were to happen, MedPro Disposal has one of the largest insurance policies in this industry. So all of our affiliates and MedPro would be, rely would be liable for anything that did happen. So all of our contracts with our customers state that once MedPro picks up the waste from you, we hold title to that waste. Therefore, if something were to happen, MedPro's insurance policy would cover it. On top of that, all of our drivers are trained in OSHA compliance. So they all have proper bloodborne pathogen training and medical waste training. So very familiar on how to service that. Now, with that being said, there is a cost and a significant one to a company that carries the type of insurance and compliance training that MedPro carries. So if you ever get a quote from a company that seems maybe a little bit too good to be true compared to what you're currently spending, this could be the case. So if there's a very substantial difference, uh, you know, some common things in the industry to charge a flat per box rate, so $40 per box, $50 per box, those are generally key indicators that that company may not have the same level of insurance that would be required if something were to happen. So certainly not trying to, you know, scare anybody into anything, but it's always a good idea to make sure that you're with a reputable vendor should anything happen. Speaking of OSHA compliance, MedPro does offer OSHA compliance training. This is just a brief brochure on what MedPro's OSHA compliance uh, has. So we have the three trainings. We have more trainings than this. These are, these are the three common ones, which are your HASCOM, your bloodborne pathogen training, and your HIPAA training. We have all of your MSDS sheets available to you online, audits that you can perform, all of your online safety plans, ICD-9 to ICD-10 conversion codes, and, and it keep you up to date with any new regulations. Now, this is not an on-site training. We do offer that, but it's not necessarily necessary. Our online portal that we've developed has shown to be just as, if not more effective than in-person training. In-person training tends to be difficult for facilities to gather all employees at one point. And something like bloodborne pathogen training that has to be done on an annual basis, if you have turnover inside that facility, sometimes you then may be going out looking for another ad hoc type of service to cover you during that. With MedPro Disposal's OSHA compliance program, it's online. You have 24 seven access to it. So all the trainings are very easy to administer. Your employees can take them on a lunch break in the morning if you set aside time for them. They can even take them at home. The only requirement is that they have access to the internet because the way that the trainings are set up, you enter their first name, last name, and an email address, and then assign the training. They'll be, shut, they'll be provided an email with a link that takes them directly to that training. The trainings encompass anywhere from five to 10 short three-minute videos 
with a four to five question quiz after each video. When that's done, the certificate pops up, it saves online, you can print it out for your records also. So this is something that is extremely user friendly. Uh, we can provide a link to a walkthrough. So a short video, short nine minute video that says that uh, shows you our portal. So certainly let us know uh, if you'd like that as well. So disposing of unwanted medication. Uh, we touched on this earlier. We want to keep this out of our water stream, out of our medical waste bins, and certainly uh, it's a great idea to not flush this down the toilet or put it down the sink as is commonly done. Um, we have a mailback program. So MedPro Disposal will mail you a pharmaceutical container. You'll put your pharmaceuticals into that container and then mail it directly to our destruction facility. It's 100% compliant by the DEA, FDA, and the USPS. Um, so we're fully compliant with all agencies, uh, very flexible. We have very uh, different sizes depending on your needs and it's cost effective and protects the public. Now the cost effective is a one-time fee, no recurring fees. It's a one-time purchase for the container. That's all inclusive. It, it contains shipping, destruction, the manifest, so the proof of destruction, the whole nine yards and it protects the public. So this prevents any illegal diversion of controlled substances. So unlike putting pills into a medical waste container where if the driver were to look in the box, could very easily see them and take them out if they wanted to, this is packaged in a non-labeled container um, that's shipped directly in a regular old brown box uh, through either the USPS, UPS, or FedEx. So because it's not labeled, nobody really knows what's inside the box. And again, I can tell you that year to date since our inception to date of this program, we have not had one diversion incident. So this is extremely uh, cost effective, easy to use, flexible, and protects everybody. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn back controls over to Maxwell. Um, I appreciate everybody logging on today and taking a look. If you have any questions at all, even if you're not interested in getting a quote, but have a question about medical waste, OSHA, pharmaceuticals, I'm always here to take your questions. Um, so use me as a source of education or a uh, information source um, or as a consultant if need be. Uh, I'd certainly be more than happy to help anybody. So. Uh, with that being said, I will go ahead and turn this back over. Okay, thanks a lot, John. Uh, we really like to have someone like John to be able to provide an in-depth look at, into medical waste disposal and the options uh, businesses have in regard to disposing of their medical waste with MedPro. So we just saw how MedPro can help your business economically dispose of medical waste. And with that, I would like to briefly show you a needy meds resource, Safe Needle Disposal, which assists individuals in finding a disposal site for their sharps. So we're on the needy meds homepage right now. We're gonna scroll down on the left side and you'll see Safe Needle Disposal and we'll select that. Okay, so this is needy meds uh, Safe Needle Disposal, a project that we have. Uh, according to the EPA, approximately 9 million people across the country use more than 3 billion needles, lancets, and syringes, also known as sharps, to manage their medical conditions. Considering the sheer volume, it's no wonder that safe disposal of sharps is such an important topic. If they are not disposed of appropriately, they can hurt not only sanitation workers, but they can leave pets and other people vulnerable to sharp stick injuries. And once someone is exposed, they are at risk of contracting life-changing diseases like hepatitis. For this reason, NeedyMeds hosts the Safe Needle Disposal website that provides locations for disposal sites in your area and the types of programs available. So, so I'm going to show you how to do a, a search on this website right now. So we're going to select the search option. And as you can see here, there's a little handy map available so you can select whichever state you're in. So we'll select Massachusetts. <clears throat> At the top of the page, you'll see some state specific information, but as you scroll down, you'll see a list of all the disposal sites available for Massachusetts. Uh, it will vary from state to state. Uh, some states might not have any disposal sites. Some states may have many of them. 
So as you can see, whether your medical waste disposal needs are business-based or individually based, there are options out there for you. And now we're going to open up for any questions that you may have um, regarding uh, what we've gone over. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's any questions at this time. So if you would like a PDF copy of the PowerPoint used in this webinar, please contact John or myself. As I mentioned earlier, a recording of the webinar will be posted on the Needy Meds webinar archives and also on the Needy Meds YouTube page. I would like to thank John for presenting for us today and MedPro Disposal for co-sponsoring this webinar. Thanks everyone and have a great day.